Gordon. I sell women's shoes. <laughs> and the stallion. Stallion, baby! I am not what you would call a handsome man. I'll kick you in the nuts and you'll smile at me and like it. And we are back with a big edition of the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast. I am your host. He is your host. He's the Stallion. I'm the Enforcer. And this week's edition of the All Night Long Wrestling Podcast is brought to you, as always, by the there Damage... This is Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man, and you are listening to Damage 365 Radio. And remember, everybody's got a price for the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> 365 Radio Network, and uh, this week we got a little bit of a recap show, as we are going to be talking last week's WWE 2017 Royal Rumble, and... We're going to name all the dead guys again, are we, this week? No, I actually, uh, I went back to 1988, so... I just really like the theme. People okay. play this under. We can play it under. As long as they don't say I'm naming deceased wrestlers again this week, then I'm okay <laughs> with that. Dino Bravo. No, no. So, I wonder how this sounds. Probably sounds all right. I just like that. If we could just focus on like, the three riffs. Hold on a second. Let's all be quiet. God, that was awesome. I, I miss when wrestling themes were like that and they weren't like disturbed and like trapped. Hedge John, that's all. God, that was terrible. <laughs> anyway, so. Even those are from like 12 years ago now, right? <laughs> Dude, speaking of, 12, speaking of 12 years ago, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here. I, uh, me and the natural at home the other night and I'm flipping through TV and I put on uh, Super Bad, right? Mm. And I'm watching Super Bad and I'm like, man, this movie was funny. And then I, I click on the old uh, infer button. And I see that Superbad came out 10 years ago, 2007. I saw Superbad on my 21st birthday with uh, E-Money. Mm. And uh, the natural was like, oh, I was in high school. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, uh, I get it. <laughs> I don't know how you know, 10 years went by so fast, pal. I really don't. But it goes by quick when you don't accomplish anything. Well, that's how it is <laughs> yeah. for me. So if that's the case, then uh, it's flying by. I just look back and I just keep thinking. Delete, 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 man, delete it all. Speaking of things I wanted to delete, no, that's not true. We actually, uh, well, let's let's kick off with the Raw Rumble, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, this week's Raw and SmackDown. But let's recap uh, the Royal Rumble. The big, uh, I don't want to say the beginning. I would say the, you know, the biggest show aside from WrestleMania. And personally, I don't know about you, my my favorite all year. It's up there. I mean, it's, um, you know, the Rumble match itself has been going on for uh, you know, like 30 years. So, and especially when they tie in the whole, um, you know, title match at WrestleMania deal. Um, it makes it pretty interesting, mm-hmm. um, especially this year, because I think going in, uh, there was a lot of speculation on who was going to win, and it was really was not really one favorite. I think in terms of like you know TV and storyline that you could pick, there was a se- several different guys that could have won, and uh, you know a couple of title matches as well. We weren't sure where they were going to go um, with the two champions and if they were going to retain or if someone new was going to win and how that was going to play into WrestleMania feud. So there was a lot of kind of uncertainty, I think, which is good. I don't think it's a bad thing, right? Not not necessarily knowing what was going to happen. It kind of adds a little bit of intrigue to it. Yeah, I, I thought so too. And there was, on paper, there were a lot of good matches. But uh, for me, like rewatchability, I think Royal Rumble is number one. Like I, each year, I like to you know watch some of the matches, you know watch some of the events of years before. And for me, the Royal Rumble it still is the most rewatchable. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the same is going to be said for this year's show, but let's get into it. Uh, first match, well, there were three matches on the pre-show. First match was uh, actually I missed this one. It was Becky Lynch, Naomi, and Nikki against uh, Alexa Bliss, Natalia, and Mickey James. I think we both predicted this one wrong, right? 
No, I think I had the faces, uh, the baby faces winning um, in this one, which I think which they did. I think it was Naomi. Um, they're trying to establish Naomi as the next challenger for Alexa Bliss, I guess. In the, I don't know how long that's going to go, but um, so she she ended up getting the win on Alexa Bliss here, and she's she's done it on SmackDown as well to kind of try to build her up as a as a contender. You just spoiled SmackDown, bro. Now yeah. people don't have to listen to our SmackDown recap. Listen, I think if people were waiting for the <laughs> if the Naomi the Alexa payoff, Bliss yeah. Naomi payoff, then I apologize to anybody out there who was who didn't want to hear that. But that's sorry, not. RJ. I feel like he was really oh, yeah. waited with bated breath. On two, that his two favorite wrestlers, um, Naomi and Shibata. That's what I heard. <laughs> that's, that's my understanding. They could make a really interesting tag team. I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to keep this one PG. Uh, okay, so you were you were one uh, one for one on that one. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was over so. one. Next match of the night, a uh, really good tag match that I enjoyed was uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, the Bullet Club, defeating uh, Sorrow and Sheamus. Uh, the double referee uh, came into the mix, which I liked in the finish. Uh, poor referee ate a brutal bro kick right to the right to the chops, right to the chops, and uh, that allowed, one referee went down, of course, and that allowed uh, Anderson to. I think he held the tights. I don't remember. I think there was a tights. Yoink there, but uh, I know I predicted the uh, the Bull Club won this match. Did you? I don't know that I did. I may not have. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Um, I think I was torn on the idea of whether they would change the titles in the pre-show, which they've done before. Um, they obviously don't give a rat patoot about the tag team titles, so yeah. So I guess you know, but I don't think um, it was a bad a bad move to change the titles. I mean, Gallows and Anderson had challenged for them so many times since they had. Uh, come over to wwe and it was you know they were kind of due i guess to to win so oh yeah um, you did say you were going with sheamus and cesaro i think i did yeah, yeah you did i could because of the pre-show thing but all right so um, we're both one for one yeah going into the, the uh, this was nia Jax defeated sasha banks i think we both saw this one coming too yeah yeah this was uh they're playing up the whole sasha Banks storyline she's a tough fighting champion but now she's kind of turning into a little bit of a douche because bailey cares about her so the boss Sasha Banks is coming back. I guess we're gonna see the heel Sasha Banks we haven't seen in forever. Cool guy here, Mister Sexy Pants. She's gonna come back, and I, I think it's too quick to turn her around because she's quite over as a as a face. And I don't think Raw really needs another heel. Di- I don't know. Sorry, diva. An- another heel uh, female star right now when you have Charlotte, but. And you have Nia Jax. So you have Nia Jax, Charlotte, Dana Brooke, who's, I don't know, probably at the power plant, you know, learning how to wrestle again. And now the outcoming Sasha Banks, and your face is on Raw. Who do you have? You have Bailey. Yeah. I don't know if there's any other ones. I don't know that you count Alicia Fox as at this point, nor what I consider her. Oh, no. She, yeah, no, she's a heel, right? Because she's with Mohan Dahar. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, that would kind of leave an imbalance, I suppose. Um, so there's two divas on Raw? I mean, there's four divas on Raw? I mean, the term divas is um, offensive. I just you know that. Uh, uh, it's what do I, uh, There were six that I can think of, right? And, and the Alicia... Like, so the Bailey, Nia Jax, Charlotte, Sasha Banks, uh, Alicia Fox... DB. And Dana Brooke. Now, I don't really know uh, when Emelina is going to be debuting. Never. She's never going to debut ever. ever. If you count her or not, but that's uh, those are the only ones on Raw that But she's I a heel too, of. right? I mean, it would appear that way. Uh, so you have one face female. Yeah, so they, they would probably need to do something with that. They would need to change something. I would assume Asuka is probably going to be coming up sooner rather than later. Maybe. Uh, she's pretty much cleaned out the entire women's division on, uh, on NXT. But um, I don't know. We'll see. Very interesting. Uh, speaking of the Raw Women's title, the opening match on the card was Charlotte and Bailey. Yeah, that's that, on the main card. Yeah, that, yeah, that was okay. That was the opening match on the card. Uh, what did you think of this match? I thought it was it was solid. Uh, there wasn't really nothing spectacular, nothing but not bad. Um, you know, they gave all these matches on the main card a decent amount of time, uh, obviously because they had to fill like a four four hour or whatever it was window. Um, from seven to like almost eleven o'clock, so there was only five matches on the main show. So this was the first one. So they gave them all a lot of time. They did okay. I mean, the finish I guess came a little bit um, suddenly, but uh, I don't know, love that move. The natural selection. Yeah, yeah. Well, she gave it to her on the ring apron, which I guess was. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's a PG show. 
She gave it the natural selection. Okay. Is there another... Uh, should I Google natural selection? Is there another uh, term out in the meaning behind that? No, no, it's not... Bueller. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that was the finish. I mean, that was fine. I think everyone kind of figured that Bailey was not going to win the title here. Um, no build, really, for this one. Right, yeah. Her, t- her time, hopefully, will be coming soon for winning the title, but uh, it wasn't, wasn't meant to be here. So they did okay. They had a pretty solid opening match, and uh, Charlotte retained. Yeah, I thought it was uh, I thought it was good for what it was, but yeah, the finish definitely to me came out of nowhere. That that I really love the move, the natural selection. I like the the idea behind it. To do it on the apron is cool because the apron is the hardest part of the ring, and you know moves hurt more over there. That move just didn't I don't know I didn't, I didn't the wow factor wasn't there for me. Mm. So, uh, that's gonna lead us into Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns for the WWE Universal Title with Chris Jericho on a pole match. Uh, yeah, uh, these two really beat the hell out of each other. These guys are very, very familiar with each other, so they work very well together. Um, the match was good; had a lot of uh, had a lot of really strong spots. The 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 bump that Kevin Owens took through that uh, a pentagon of chairs. I don't even know what it was. It looked very, 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 very tough to take. But the issue that I'm I have in this match, and I'm sure other people do too, is. Is there anything else Roman Reigns can kick out of? Uh, shy of decapitating him in the middle of the ring, Roman's going to kick out of it. He took a Superman punch with brass knuckles. He kicked out of it. He took he, he took everything. and you know. Uh, but eventually, uh, just when you thought Roman Reigns was going to be your new universal champion, who came out but Braun Strowman? To, uh, I think there was a chorus of thank you Braun chants after that. And... Uh, yeah, I, I thought I really thought they were gonna you know pull the trigger on the uh, on the Roman Reigns Universal Title, but they kept it on Kevin Owens for one more day. Yeah, I guess um, you know like the 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 rumor or the uh, the plan. I don't know when they'd figure it out. You know, it kind of maybe seemed to alter um, leading up to the show. Uh, as far as you know, I think most people, myself included, thought Reigns was just gonna win here, and then he would keep it for a couple months and go into Mania. With it, but it seems like they're gonna they're going a different direction as far as the the universal title is concerned. Um, they're gonna go uh, with well, it hasn't been announced yet, but the rumor is that it's gonna be Owens and Goldberg at Fastlane in a few weeks, um, and then Goldberg and Lesnar is pretty much already written in stone for WrestleMania. So the title might be involved in that. Oh my god! Match, wait, but we don't Goldberg know. and Lesnar for the title is that is that possible? I mean, it's possible. I mean, if if the oh, the assumption god. I have is that is that Owens will face Goldberg at Fastlane, which is supposed to be the match. And then Goldberg would probably win that and then have the title for a month and face Lesnar at WrestleMania. Um, at which point, you know, I don't know what the... I assume that Lesnar's going to get his win back at some point and that would be the time to do it. But I don't know. Uh, so we'll see. But that, So I guess that was, that was the thing. So Owens ended up winning, as you said, by um, with a help from Strowman. The match was no DQ, which they just uh, made it like the week before on Raw, so that enabled Strowman to freely interfere, and uh, I think he chokeslammed Reigns on the table, which did not break, um, and then Owens ended up uh, beating him shortly after that. I'm, I'm a little taken aback. Is this common knowledge they're going to do Lesnar, I'm, I'm sorry, is it Goldberg and Owens at Fastlane? Is that is that common knowledge to people? Uh, I don't know if it's common knowledge. I think it's just, that's just the the rumored plan. Now, is it from Meltzer? Is that where it came from? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's oh, a main okay. source of it, I, I believe. Because um, they didn't really hint at anything like that on, on Raw this this week, which we'll get to in a few minutes. But um, And Goldberg wasn't even on the show, but he's, he's scheduled to be on next Monday. Um, you know, it seems like they're going to go with, I mean, just based off of what they've done this week, right? They, they're going to probably go with Reigns versus Strowman at Fastlane, um, Jericho versus Zayn at Fastlane, and I think the idea was going to be, uh, well, we'll get to Rollins' situation later, but, uh, and then the, I guess the, the idea was that Goldberg is supposed to have a match at Fastlane, that's been 